Primarily, it is a lung infection. However, it does spread. Okay. Uh, does anybody know which organs it kind of likes to spread to, other than the lungs, obviously? Heart. Huh? Heart. I don't know. Are you guessing or do you know? It's a guess. It's a guess? Because they're, because they're close? Yeah. You would think. Um, it's not one of the main ones that it tends to stick to, though. So, I mean, obviously, you know, it would you know, kind of go through there, but not one of the main ones that it tends to stick to. The ones we tend to see it, like, crop up later, I think, is that Bethany, where you're talking about that, where it comes up later? Yeah, you were reading that thing where it comes up later and kind of infects. Um, when it does, it tends to hit, like, the, uh, the adrenal gland. Remember when we were talking about Addison's disease? I don't know if you noticed that, but Addison's disease, one of the causes of Addison's disease listed was actually tuberculosis. Um, so that's, that is one of the places that it tends to pop up later. I believe the pancreas is another secondary kind of organ that uh, it tends to hit. But uh, yeah, oddly enough, I mean, I'm sure it does hit the heart. It's just not one of the big, big ones. Um, anyway, so there's that. But anytime, if you look at these, these uh, risk factors, um, ultimately the cause is you know, coughing. But the risk factors themselves are crowded spaces, right? So you don't see a ton of it in the U.S. Okay, is there a stat up there about that? Yeah, 14,000 in 2005. I don't know why we have 2005 stat, but they probably could update it. But in either case, 14,000, you think that that was a lot. It's not that much, relatively speaking. In fact, most cases of TV that you do see in the U.S., we're talking the major international port cities like New York, maybe Los Angeles, that kind of thing because somebody's coming from somewhere else in the world and bringing it with them, and they tend to live very close together anyway, right? So uh, they're kind of coughing in each other's face, so you have those places, but you also have, classically, when you say risk factors, who gets this, it's gonna be people living in crowded living quarters of any kind. Um, military parents is a, is a classic one. It can spread really fast, and college dorms, right? Why? Because you're pretty close together. Now, having said that, the dorms here are actually pretty nice, in my opinion. Um, you're not that close together, but you kind of are, right? They get, what do they get those rooms in here? What are they, four packs? Three. They got like two and two? They have three. Three? They got three in a cubby? They have three of us in a one room, and then three of another room, and then they share a cubby. Dude. Yeah. I remember when they first built those dorms, it was only two and two. Yeah. Well, some have two and two, some have three and three. Oh. If you, like, if you agree, it's like less cost. I'm sure. So people will like, opt for that if they don't want to pay as much as housing. Yeah, Especially yeah. if you come in with two other friends and then you're just like, you're cool. That's cool. Yeah. As long as your two other friends don't have TV, right? <laughs> so you're good to go. <laughs> um, all right. I didn't realize they, they packed them in at three in some of the dorms. Okay. Um, I'm sure it is. Because it's cheaper to have just like you and somebody else. So like, oh, it's more expensive to have you and somebody else, which is cheaper to have. Yeah. Yeah. I understand they also got rid of the married student housing some yeah. years back too, right? Because they used to have those little. Yeah, those things over there across from Subway. Those used to all be like married student. Yeah. Um, but I guess that's gone too. Whatever. Is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. There is an option for marriage housing, but it's not at. So the college. The, the university still has merit housing? No. <laughs> Why are you saying yes and you're saying no? They don't they have don't. it. They, they, got rid of it. they got rid of it last year? Yes, the last year too. Okay. I have friends freshman year So in freshman year they had it? Yeah. And then they got rid of it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know when they got rid of it. I, I know that mm -hmm. my son who goes here is mm -hmm. engaged and he was asking about it. And he told me that, like, a month ago that they didn't have it, so I was like, oh, well, they used to. Apparently that was it, sometime in between last year and now. Bummer. In any case, um, <laughs> I'm going with this. Okay, <laughs> Bethany, when you were saying about that cough, can you describe the cough? On a scale from one to 10, one being a <clears throat> and 10 being like your lungs are gonna come right out of your throat. It was like aggressive and aggressive. aggressive. Okay, um, I did a, 
I want to say six week rotation in an infectious disease clinic in this little town in Mexico. And I did three things during that, during, during that time. I basically wrote prescriptions for TB meds, HIV meds, and hepatitis meds. Um, that TB cough scared me to death all day, every day, and I was wearing double masks. Um, when you hear somebody with an active case of, of acute TB, I was literally waiting for their lungs to come out of their mouth. I mean, I'm like, I'm like any second now that I'm just, it's plop, it's gonna come flying out on the table or something like that because it is horrible. It, it's a deep, deep, deep cough. So, all, right, all the way, and, and you're like, wow, that is bad. But if you think about what's happening, this bacteria is eating away at that lungs. Remember what kind of necrosis it was? With TB in the lungs? Cases. Cases, Cases. necrosis, cottage cheese like, right? And again, they used to call it consumption because it kind of consumes and just kind of eats the lungs away as it goes, assuming that it's not being treated um, and it's a bad case of it. So yeah, that's what people back in the 1800s or whatever used to die of. They, they would die of a consumption. You know, it would take a very, very long time to just kind of eat away, eat away, eat away, and then they get weaker, 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 and just die. Um, pretty bad kind of thing here. Um, here's the problem with TB. You've got to be careful, like in everything in this class, because where have we seen night sweats, fatigue, fever, and chills? Yeah. And obviously different problem. Yeah, so all of the leukemias, lymphomas, all of that kind of stuff was still there. Okay, don't get locked in when you're looking at a case study or listening to a patient's history, for that matter, on one thing. Always, you want to go very broad, and then ask questions, narrow, 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 narrow down until you get there. In this case, the period of sputum is going to help a little bit because that means you are actively producing something coming out of there that's like nasty, okay? That's gonna help a little bit. Don't really do that with like leukemias and stuff like that, right? Um, you may get that with, uh, you know, some kind of nasty bacterial infection. Though. Strep throat may do that. Um, even some really bad colds or flus might do that. Um, <coughs> cases necrosis, pleurisy, okay, that's a little unusual. What is pleurisy referring to? The word pleurisy. Huh? Yeah, referring to the lungs. Remember our pleural layers, right? So basically the irritation of the pleural layers um, of the lungs. So that's a little unusual. You can maybe hear that with a stethoscope. Um, <clears throat> however, one other thing that we want to point out, and again, those, those granulomas, okay, what's happening with that is when the TB comes in and the immune system tries to fight it, it's going to kind of form these little granuloma, hard little shells, or some calcium involved in that, and basically try to wall it off, right? We may have talked about that before when we were talking about the brain and the liquefactor necrosis from like that little worm that got in there, right? Um, you look at it, it looks grainy. So it's, you know, a little, I think there's a bunch of granulocytes in there too, but um, in either case, you have these little granulomas. In TB, uh, we will call it a GONE complex sometimes. G-H-O-N, GONE complex, okay? And this is, uh, apparently they need this sign where Bethany was in Africa, it was, do not spit. Ask others this up. This is like the old, old signs that they used to put up. You know, the public health announcement kind of thing. <clears throat> okay. Any of you guys ever had a TB test? Well, that's a lot of people. Good for you. You guys like all having to like work or volunteer in healthcare settings. Could you, you come to school to you have TB? To school. Not as far as I know. I know you gotta get them from like measles, mumps, rubella, and all that stuff. Huh? Well, a tetanus shot um, is always a good idea every 10 years because you never know if you're gonna step on some nasty nail, rusty nail with tetanus on it. Um, yeah, tetanus shots do hurt. That's like my one of my least favorites. Because it is, it's a, it's a painful shot. Anyway, I digress. Um, 
So those of you have, who have not had a TB skin test, um, you will if all things go well, right? If it all goes well, you're gonna have to get one because you're gonna be in a hospital, right? And everybody who works in a hospital is going to get one, so you hope you get one of those. Uh, is anybody here, do you think you're going to come up positive for it? Why would you come up positive for it? Uh, my parents are sort of born in the United States, and stuff like that. And, uh, they were all born in Jamaica. Uh huh. They're always positive. I think, yeah, they used to give them TV. I don't know why. Okay. Yeah. So, um, there is a vaccination for TV. Right? If you are born outside the U.S., there's a decent chance you've had to end that immunization. Uh, which means, yes, don't do the skin test. You will come up positive every time because that's what a vaccination does. It gives you the dead, in this case, shell of the bacteria, and you're going to make antibodies, and you're going to have those antibodies forever if all goes well. Right? So you're going to come up positive every time. So don't have them stick the stupid little needle in there because it is going to boil. Right? Instead, say, look, I had the vaccination when I was a kid. I'm going to come up positive. They're going to say, okay, fine. Let's just do a chest x-ray to make sure nothing's active. Does that make sense? So it doesn't keep you from working in a hospital. It just makes it work. You should probably tell them before they do it. Okay? Um, save everybody a bunch of time. Now, having said that, some hospitals will do it anyway. They're like, yeah, okay, fine. We're going to do it anyway. It's our protocol. Whatever is what it is. Um, but there's that. Okay. All right. So what are we looking at here? Hmm? Is there the white spots? <coughs> We're looking at the, can you see the granuloma here? Or granulomas, actually. I don't know, I can't tell them. No, I think I'm too close. Uh, Looking for this little granuloma. You see one like here on that x-ray? Okay. Is there anything else that looks weird in this lump? Remember, when you're looking at lungs, um, it should be more or less the same on both sides and mostly dark, because dark is air, right? So what stands out here, anything? Side. White stuff. Like white stuff everywhere or a specific spot? Lower left. Lower left of the patient. Yes. So here. Yes. Okay, what is that? Anybody have any idea what that is? Yeah. The heart. Uh, well, no, the heart actually is. Um, you do tend to see a little thing right about here. So this first part of it, you, you, you would see white anyway, probably. On the left side, you're right. You're correct. Then on the left, you would see more of the heart right here. But this part up here is, that isn't normally there, yeah? Yeah, it's fluid. You can see it, it's like fluid. Like it, like you're filling this lung up with fluid. Can you see that? It's like a cup. You're filling that lobe of the lung up with fluid. Um, does anybody know what that is?